In March 2012, the Maison Française hosted an exhibition dedicated to the diary of Hélène Baer, a young Jewish Parisian who perished in 1944 during the Holocaust. The event, organized by the Paris-based Shoah Memorial, brought to Washington Hélène's niece, Mariette Job, who initiated the diary's publication in 2008. Hélène Baer est née le 27 mars 1921. Elle est la troisième de la famille. Hélène Baer was born on March 27, 1921. She was the third of her siblings. After excelling in high school, she went on to complete her bachelor's degree in English. She then studied <coughs> to prepare for the agrégation competitive exam on John Keats. But this was October 1942, and the anti-Jewish laws of Vichy prevented her from taking the exam. On those evenings when new roundups are imminent, the Bear family no longer stays in their apartment. Among those who sheltered them during the last months is André Bardieu, who is there on the day of their arrest in the early morning of March 8, 1944. They are transferred to Drancy and then deported to Auschwitz on March 27th the day Hélène turns 23. Hélène, survivra plus an an. Hélène survives another year. She is transferred out of Auschwitz on October 31st, 1944. She suffers from typhus, and one morning she cannot get up for roll call. She's savagely beaten by one of the guards, and the flame of life that remained in her dies out early April 1945, five days only before the camp is liberated by the British. This pressing desire to make the journal known is something that came to me very early on. It was akin to choosing life over death. It took 60 years for the journal to come out of the family realm a text that is universal in its message and speaks to all. In spite of the many obstacles, sometimes unexpected, and the difficulties linked to the publishing of the book, I am now greatly rewarded. Uh, the diary of Hélène Baer has attracted extraordinary attention globally. And uh, while each uh, memoir of someone who lived through the Holocaust is valuable and precious in, in some sense as, as a testimony to uh, individuals' horrific experiences. And among the many, many hundreds of such diaries, which continue to be found and, and published, um, the diary of Hélène Baer simply stands out. Uh, why does it stand out? It stands out because uh, of not only the quality of Hélène Baer's uh, reporting, of what she saw, what she experienced, but also how she felt. And she writes with such extraordinary um, sensitivity and maturity as a writer. It's, it's, so, it's on her mind. I mean, throughout this whole uh, experience, she's writing her thesis. And she's turning over literary illusions all the time, Dostoevsky, Keats, Shelley, Shakespeare. And these are her reference points. Who, who has the, you know, the uh, force of uh, literary imagination to do this when you are being tracked and when you are being humiliated and when your family is you know, being torn apart and so forth? And yet this, these are her points of reference. So she's extraordinary prodigy. En fait, j'ai retrouvé donc le, le fiancé de Hélène Baer, Jean Moravieski, en 1992. I first met Hélène Baer's boyfriend, Jean Moravieski, in 1992. He had held on to the manuscript for 60 years. He didn't really know what to do with it. Et donc en 94, donc deux ans après In 1994, two years after we met, he decided to give me the diary. Don du journal. I made copies of it, 12 for each member of my family. I also gave one to the Shoah Memorial, where it was displayed. 
I finally decided to donate the original diary to the memorial in 2002. I often say that Eden Bear's small story is part of his story. In 1995, President Jacques Chirac officially recognized the responsibility of the French state in the persecutions. On the date of the Veldiv raid, as we name it, the 16th of July, 1995, he recalled, and I quote, that France, the cradle of the Enlightenment and human rights, a land of welcome and asylum, France on that day committed the irreparable. Failing in her word, she delivered those she protected to their executioners, end quote. This major statement is an important milestone in France's attitude toward the Holocaust and the Vichy regime. In 1990, for example, France passed one of the world's harshest laws criminalizing negotiationism, the act of Holocaust denial. For decades before that, the French public had been educated about the Holocaust through numerous books and films and it was taught in the schools. Le journal s'achèvera le 15 février 1944 sur ces trois mots. The diary ended on February 15, 1944 with three words. Horror, horror, horror.